Hello and welcome to the Writing Community Chat Show. It is a special birthday show, a bonus show, of course, because we are here on a Monday, uh, which is not the usual time for a show, of course, that's a Thursday, but there's a good reason we are here. It is the second year birthday of the Writing Community Chat Show, loosely, um, and it's just fantastic to come and celebrate that, uh, especially with a very cool guest that we've got coming on today. Um, thank you for all the support, by the way, that's been flying around on Twitter and social media today with the hashtag... Um, trying to make a bit of a, a, an awareness session. Um, so I appreciate that very much. Um, I just got to say thank you to everyone that's tuned in over the two years, whether it's on the podcast or the YouTube channel. Uh, this is the 190th show, which kind of blows my mind, really. Um, it really does. And those shows over the, that time have accumulated over 17,000 plays on the YouTube channel, uh, sorry, podcast channel, and over 34,000 plays on the YouTube channel, which is kind of a catching up game. So that's miles ahead despite being... Um, a late, a late um, addition to the show. Um, hello to you all in the, the chat. It's nice to see you. Uh, happy birthday, Halo Scott. Thank you very much. Nice to see you in the chat there, and Anya and Paul as well. Hello, and thank you for for tuning in here. In here, um, I just got to think back to all the shows that we've had and and laughing at the Ian Rankin show, for example, when he sent a gift instead of a gif on the show and um, that all confusion was very funny in fact there's a bit of a highlights reel at the end of tonight's show that you can have a look at uh, which does feature that clip um, and for all the indie author the discussion panels and the panel shows we've had with, with the brilliant impressions we've had through the season um, and the series that we've had those in and just getting to interview, interview someone like Max Brooks for myself, who wrote World War Z, is my, one of my favorite books, it's just an incredible experience so I feel very privileged to be in this position right now and um, I'm sure it's just uh, exaggerated that by looking at all those clips that I've kind of put together for later on. Um, but I do have an amazing guest on for you tonight, which I can't wait to get um, involved with. Uh, and that's, um, it's a weird thing to say, isn't it? But that, I've seen this guest on the other side of a webcam before. Um, not quite like that, but in a, in a, a funny, brilliant, magical sense. Um, and I'm sure you have seen the guest announcement, so you know who I'm talking about. Um, so tonight's guest is, um, I'm, I'm very excited, really am. Um, he is part of a birthday show that I was at before, and that's why I've seen him. So I was very, very keen to get him on here. And he's from London. Um, he does a lot of street magic, and he has a YouTube channel that does very well as well. He's also been around the world with his street magic, which is, is incredible. And some of his shows have been on, say, Amazon and, and BBC, for example. Um, this is a quote that I found. It says, Pete is an incredible magician. I was so blown away. I hired him to come to my house and coach me for my Dumbledore role in relation to the Fantastic Beasts 2 movie. And that was Jude Law. Um, so there it goes. Some validation from some big, big names there. And of course, um, this is the best one I like to, to say and announce him into the show with. I've never seen a better close-up magician than this lanky dude. And that <laughs> was from the amazing Dawn French. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the lanky dude, which is Pete Heat. Welcome. Thank you very much. Hello. Oh, Pete, <laughs> thank you so much for joining me on the show. Honestly, I'm, I'm really excited for this. And I know a lot of people who were part of that birthday show, in fact, um, mm. were just kind of really excited to hear that you were coming on the show as well. So thank you. Oh, cool. No, thanks for having me. Yeah, the lankiness doesn't come across on camera, does it? But <laughs> it doesn't. Right, rest right now, assured, I'm, I'm very tall. I actually very look tall. taller than you right now on the screen, but I, yeah, I, I saw that it. picture of you and, <laughs> yeah. you and Dawn yeah. French, and it is in a massive comparison. Yeah, she yeah she's pretty small as well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. what, so what was it? Did you did you join one of those? Um, so I, I was doing a lot of kind of pay what you want um, Zoom uh, kind of Zoom magic shows at the beginning of the first lockdown. Is that what you what you saw me at? Maybe? I think so. It was in lockdown. Yeah. yeah, it was it was my uncle's birthday party, and um, I hadn't heard for you at that point and uh, of you, mm. and they said the magician on 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 the Zoom call, and I was kind of like, oh, what what's that going to be like? And then I was just. Everyone talked about you for constantly afterwards. It was amazing. Oh, really? Oh, amazing. That's good. Yeah, Magic's, especially in the UK, Magic's got this weird um, sort of dual edge to it, hasn't it? Like it can either, some people think it's really cool and exciting. And like a lot of people, if you say you're a magician, they're like, oh, like they have a picture in balloon animals and uh you know, <laughs> yeah. and top hats or a spinning bow tie or whatever so yeah hope yeah i don't know it's just a straight it's a strange one whenever i whenever i say i'm a magician to people you can you can see in their face which one of those things that, that they associate with magic yeah it is weird um, isn't it i mean is that literally like you've got on your cv as a magician 
I'm just I'm a magician. Yeah, so so I, I guess yeah. actually I've got two things. I'm a, I, although they're both within the remit of magician. I'm a magician and I'm a magic consultant, which wow. is basically, basically what that is. Is I get hired by um, people on TV shows to to help come up with magic tricks. So, well, so in fact, the Druid Law thing is one example of that. Yeah. Um, so that was I got hired to to kind of teach him some some sleight of hand stuff. Obviously, they used CG, CGI to make the magic happen in the Harry Potter film, but yeah. he wanted to actually feel like he could do some cool stuff. Um, you know, in addition to the the, the computer trickery, so um, I got hired for that, which was pretty cool. Um, but also on more like actual kind of magic shows, like for example, there's a there's a hidden camera magic show called Tricked that you may or may not have seen on ITV2. It's not not on anymore, but it used to be. And I basically I was part of a team of magicians that worked on that, and we just had to come up with all these cool sort of magic based pranks every every week, nice. like, um, which was yeah. And so you're you're not on the screen, you know, as a consultant, you're just behind the scenes, kind of uh, kicking ideas around. But it's it's kind of like the equivalent of a joke writer for a comedian. You know, you don't get any <laughs> of the any of the credit, but you it's a fun job to have. Yeah, fantastic. I mean, that sounds like really. A job well done to get to the point where you're teaching people how to do magic as well not just performing so uh yeah. obviously on this show what we love to do is dig into the history behind all of this as well and actually learn how you became what you are today and and yeah. that is a very interesting question because normally that's aimed at authors but this is obviously yeah. a different route completely so at what stage in your life did magic suddenly become a real obsession or influence with your life I yeah I've been into magic since I was since I was really young since I was maybe I don't know six or seven like properly young but um obviously I was terrible at it at that time but I just <laughs> I just I, I loved it and uh, I remember uh, I've always had uh, I remember when I first heard the phrase a criminal mind right but like someone was someone had a criminal mind and I was like what does that mean and someone described it and I was like. I think that's what I've got. <laughs> Basically, I don't mean like in an actual criminal sense, but I, my my I'm I'm quite analytic, analytical, I think, and I'm always trying to work out ways that um, I'm really interested by deception, like not not again, not in like a kind of nasty way, but I just love the things that can trick your brain, like illusions and uh, how how your brain kind of can can be sort of wrong footed by mm -hmm. you know by this kind of thing so I was always into the, that stuff and I remember realizing that at a really young age I was fascinated by hustle movies like cons and and, and just and magic and um and I read a book in fact my, my uncle is, a, is a, an amateur magician I mean he's very good but he, he doesn't do it for a job and um he he came around at Christmas once and um just showed me some stuff and I was just like this is the best thing I've ever seen yeah. um and again yeah being quite analytical I really wanted to know how it all worked and I had mm. absolutely no idea how it could even be possible so so that was that was the first kind of spark of you know of um a kind of awareness that it even existed and that that could be a thing that you could do and um well, oh yeah and shortly after that i started getting quite obsessed and i went to the library and i got a book out about houdini and it was it was like kind of written by him or co-written by him so mm. it's probably a massively fictionalized account of his <laughs> life but but all the stuff in it was like this guy's the coolest guy in the world and i just yeah I, I, that whole world the kind of old school magic world it's like it's just pretty interesting and pretty um pretty yeah exciting so I, I um although i was just basically making a coin disappear and you know really low level stuff i was just being part of that world in any way just was quite kind of um it was really appealing to me and mm. yeah that, that was the beginning i think and obviously that that was a long time ago and a lot of steps had to be yeah, i had to do a lot to get to the stage where i'm doing it for a job but that was yeah that was the um the start of it I can imagine. Yeah, it must take a lot of trial and error. I mean, do you remember like the first trick that you nailed and you thought this is brilliant that you really got nailed down? Yeah, I, I, well, I'll probably uh, remember another thing uh, as soon as I've said this. Uh, but the first thing I can think of, but the first thing I actually learned was I had to make a coin disappear. Um, mm. And it was sort of it was your very basic kind of in this behind your ear kind of thing. It's one of those, but, um, but that was that was what got me kind of interested. But then the first one, the, the first proper good trick that I, or at least in my opinion, the first proper good trick that I learned that used to kind of floor grown ups as well as kids was one um, where basically you've got a you've got a shuffle pack of cards and you give it to someone and they deal it face down into two piles, just random, not not alternating, but just randomly three three there and two there, just in, they deal it however they want into two piles. And when you turn the piles uh, over at the end, uh, one of the piles is all red cards and the other the other pile is all the black cards. So they've separated them out into the two colors without knowing how they've done it. Um, so that that's a real, that's, I, did, I didn't come up with the trick annoyingly because mm. it's great, but it's one that I learned as a, as a kid and I was like, this is the, this is the best thing ever. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, so coming up with a trick then, 
how difficult can that be? Because that must be really, it, I must you know, tricky. Yeah, well, yeah, that is exactly yeah. what it is. Yeah, so it's, it's weird because unlike in, in any other job when you have a problem to solve, you you're you're kind of you, you kind of start with well what's possible right but with magic you have to start with what's not possible and that has to be the thing that you you end up with it's like the so it's kind of like problem solving but in reverse you you have to kind of create the problem anyway so 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 but but like anything it's something that you can um your brain starts getting good at the more you do it so that you start thinking kind of in this more lateral way um i'm sure it's the same if you kind of i don't know if you create um crossword puzzles or whatever <laughs> like any kind like i'm sure you just start to see something and think oh that would be a good crossword clue or whatever but it's the same with magic you can you you see well th there are two kind of ways of coming up with a trick there's e either you just see something that behaves a bit weirdly and you think oh that's that's weird i wonder like say for example if magnets didn't exist but you saw the first magnet and you'd be like well these things stick together even though they but like even though they shouldn't you know uh, you, you'd be like well i can use that for a trick right yeah. obviously everyone everyone knows about magnets but um if, if you were the first person to discover them you'd be like this is going to make an amazing magic trick so some, sometimes it's just that you see something cool and you think right that that's something that i don't think many people know happens like some weird physical property of something you go right like, I, I think people wouldn't assume that that object would do that thing so and then you can kind of customize that to make it into a trick or and, and this is probably the more common way of coming up with a trick uh, or you you cr you come up with the concept first so like um like you just literally think what would be the coolest thing that i could do with you know with whatever a, a red phone box or with a an elephant or with a, you know, whatever whatever it is um you come up with the concept first and as so i like you go okay it would be cool if you know say if the phone box levitated off the ground and then whatever um, and and then you and then obviously that can't happen but you have to kind of gradually remove all of the reasons why it can't happen <laughs> so like so so you have to kind of so, so an obvious thing would be right okay maybe it's maybe it's on wires and it's like well you could see the wires or maybe you could if you lit it in a certain way you can't see the wires it's like yeah but people would just assume that the reason you were doing it in the dark was because of that so you have to gradually work your way through all of the kind of all of the limitations and come up with a solution for each one of them I hope that probably sounds like absolute gibberish, but not at all. No. Yeah. Okay. Um, that sounds or, or, like an absolute nightmare in my mind, but I know people love to solve a problem. So I guess you, you may, you yeah, might be you that way inclined where you'd like to tap into it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, like, uh, so uh, this is, a, this is probably a more concrete example. I say, if you want to make something disappear, right. Yeah. Obviously the, the, and without wanting to shatter anyone's illusions you can't like that's that's you, yeah. that you can't make it disappear so so one of the one of these things have, has to happen either um you have to move it secretly right so maybe there's a trap door or whatever but then if you do that you have to think right well people will expect that there probably is a trap door so you have to kind of maybe seem to rule that out well, like it couldn't be a trap door because it's over it's on a on an ice rink or whatever you know you have to find a way to make that trap door seem implausible right so that's one option you move the thing the second option would be maybe that the thing is uh is still there but you just can't see it so maybe like um maybe you'd camouflage it so it's still there but it looks like it's not i say if you had a coin that was sort of flesh colored on the back or something and it looked like it was it looked like it was going from your hand but it's still there so that's that's like a kind of more lateral thinking way of, of doing it like you think right let's say to make the coin disappear maybe you just don't move it at all maybe it's still there or like the third option which is which would be really cool would, would be maybe the coin was never there to begin with but everyone just thought it was right and that's wow. often that that's often how um the really good magic tricks work they let you do as the audience member all the assuming so you 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 think like you think you know the state of play at the beginning you think right he's holding a coin or whatever but um but that that was the deception actually happened in setting up this whole premise and the coin was never there anyway and so they can search for it as much as they want and it they'll never find it because he wasn't actually holding one and um, so so again this is all very kind of abstract but it's that sort of thinking that you have to yeah you have to kind of yeah go into which it's is mind blowing quite, it is. Oh, I'm too cool. simple to figure this stuff out and it just blows my <laughs> mind. Um, yeah, so I obviously mentioned at the start, you know, Jude Law talking about you. Um, mm. uh, and I noticed on your Instagram, I like doing a bit of Instagram stalking. Um, yeah, you know, yeah, you, yeah. you kind of wowed Tom Grennan at the airport and you met Joe oh, Wicks yeah. and all these people. Mm. Do you find yeah. it more difficult to try and impress celebrities or is it exactly the same sort of process for you? Do you ever get nervous whilst doing your tricks, if that makes sense? No, yeah, it does. Um, I I'm sure I have been nervous. Uh, like you know, what makes me nervous particularly is if I've got um, 
say maybe a TV commissioner or someone who could actually change my life. Um, yeah. Then you can you you can be. I mean, obviously, a celebrity could really if they're famous enough. But but um, it, it's more that sort of thing, like industry kind of um, mm. things that, that make me actually a bit sort of edgy and nervous. But with with celebrities, like because I do, um, I get booked to as, as you probably know from my website. I get booked for all these kind of quite high end like events and parties and things. And there's often one or two celebrities there or more depending on the event. And often they actually seem to um, react better to the magic than it, like I think maybe maybe everyone's been trying to talk to them all night because they're the famous yeah. person, and then and then you come you kind of create a bit of a welcome diversion for them and something they can have fun with and get involved with without just having to constantly go. Yep, uh, yeah, I'm next off on tour in October. Yeah, and my next album's coming out in, you know, like, like they kind of um, they get interviewed all night by everyone else at the party. So when you come over, they're like, "Yes, great magic," uh, <laughs> because it's something. It's a bit of a, a bit of a distraction, and it's um, something a bit different. So, so actually, th th it's often the case that they're really, really receptive to it, which is yeah. good. Some less so than others. I did. I, I met, <laughs> met Victoria Beckham at a thing, and she basically turned her back on me. <laughs> but, um, no but, way. Yeah, but David was right. So it was it was it was um it was Victoria and David sitting together at this banquet thing and he was nice and he was getting involved with the trick and stuff. And she literally turned her back, like, like literally turned her chair. <laughs> and this was at a round dining table, and she turned her chair so she was facing away from the table. That's how much she did not want to see a magic trick. Um, but that was a, a pretty rare, a pretty rare. Wow. Really I mean, I mean, probably David was quite into that. Um you know, not suggesting anything. But did she explain why the fact that she might have turned away? I, I don't know. She didn't. Um, she did not want to talk to me enough for that. Um, oh, but dear me. so, I, so his. I wonder if it's. I wonder if it's this. Here was my theory at the time. So they know the Beckhams know David Blaine, right? And it, and and there's okay. a special that a special that had just come out of Blaine around the Beckhams' house, and he's doing the, the craziest stuff. Like he he sews his lips together, and then he starts regurgitating frogs, uh, like live frogs, out of his mouth uh, through the gaps in the thread, and you know, like properly insane stuff. And and I think people when they know a magician, they get they often get kind of. Um, like territorial protective about them like no we've got a magician mate and like he's, <laughs> yeah. he's uh, i don't know and he's david blaine so I've, I've got no time for like anyone else um so maybe it was that or maybe she just you know maybe she was in a bad mood or, or you know god knows i mean I, I bet i bet when you're famous people often attribute stuff to you being rude when it's like you've had a hard day and like and whatever and you know who knows um but but yeah it just seemed like she was being rude <laughs> so uh, yeah that's i think that's crazy but I, what i'd like to talk about is you know, you've done things around the world in terms of your magic, and yeah. you talked about being receptive in, in towards that magic. Mm. Is it any different when you go to different countries and 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 see younger people or older people? Is there really yeah. kind of a, a sweet point for you? And what's it like being in another country where people don't even kind of speak the language at the time as well? Yeah, no, it definitely differs around the world. Yeah, so I did um I did a show called Around the World in Eighty Tricks where we went to go to some different cities doing 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 magic. So it's quite good to see. To see um, sort of how it played out, but yeah, so so an obvious example is in America. Not, not that not that I went there for this series, but in America, people are kind of they're dialed up to eleven. They're loud and enthusiastic, and it makes for great, maybe slightly less sincere. Who knows? But it makes for great reactions because everyone's scre screaming and running around, and you know, it's like well, it feels like right. This is like this is like on a magic program. You know, people are, that's how you expect people to react if you've watched an episode of any kind of street magic show. Um, so Americans are very over the top and loud, which is great. Um, English a bit more reserved at first, but then they mm. kind of. I think there's been quite a lot of good magic on TV in England, so that, so the English people are kind of starting to accept that magic can be fun, <laughs> you know. Like I think I think in the 70s and 80s there was a lot of Paul Daniels and lots of sequins and old school stuff that made, gave magic maybe a bit of a sort of bad reputation. And in some to some people, obviously Paul Daniels was a massive hit, but it wasn't for everyone. But now yeah. with all the kind of slightly kind of cooler, like with Darren Brown doing really intelligent, articulate kind of um, presentations, I think he's opened up the market to a different kind of crowd, which is cool. But then, yeah, like, um, sorry, I'm getting, I'm going off topic slightly. <laughs> but I, um, in, um, I went to Bahrain with, uh, to do a big, um, like a corporate, I was launching uh, this mobile phone network, Saudi, Saudi Telecom or something. Um, and I was there for uh, quite a while, like maybe six weeks, I think. And, um, the, there was so it, the, the, you, you weren't allowed to call magic magic you had to call it illusion because magic in sort of in uh in like islamic 
terms, I guess. Magic is is one of, is haram. It's like one of the things that you're not technically allowed to to do or to do. Okay. So, so it, it, because I mean, again. again I doubt very much that everyone in these countries thinks this, but but like in in a the sort of the more fundamental um, religious view is that magic is a bad thing and it uses um, what they call jinns, like bad bad demons, basically to carry yeah. out what you do. This probably sounds like I'm being horrendously racist. I'm really not. There's a lot. No. Like, uh, but that, that, literally, we were told not to call it. You know, we we're told by them not to call it magic. It had to be illusion, and it had to be. Um, you know, uh, yeah, very clear that you're not, you know, doing like actual evil stuff. Um, so again, and, and, and like with the, the young, the younger people were really into it, but the older people often did have this sort of reserve, like they wouldn't want to get involved, like they felt that that was something that you shouldn't be messing with, which is which is interesting. Um, yeah, so it does vary all over the place, but but one thing about it, I guess, is that it's quite a universal. Um, it's just quite appealing, like even to like to little kids, to grown ups, mm. everyone likes even if they think they're not going to like it often people like magic because it's got that kind of um yeah it's just it's just visual and exciting and uh and, and yeah and people like puzzles and people like mystery yeah so so it's yeah it goes down well i think uh magic is definitely especially in britain it is definitely becoming more uh, popular as you, you mentioned all the videos that you can see on youtube for example now um people can try that out themselves and get the reactions through th something like youtube now um but even darren brown i think it may be thought park the theme park there's one of the, oh, yeah. i'm sure he's got a ride there that's kind of loosely around his magic but it's, it's based on a train um yeah. so there's loads of things like that opportunities do you feel like there's more opportunity for you now or do you kind of feel like the fact that YouTube is there and there's more platform for people to show, it's now a harder um, a thing to kind of succeed in. Um, no, I think I think it's a good thing. I think I think um, there, there is obviously probably an element of there's probably an element of that. Certainly, that, that there's there's so many magicians out there that you can mm. watch just by a click of a mouse. But, but that's got to be a good thing, really. Like, as long as you're good at I mean, one thing I one one thing I don't do really is exploit social media properly. Like people who are posting constantly on Instagram or TikTok or whatever, like, you know, they because magic is is so instantly visually kind of appealing. They build up millions and millions of followers very quickly. Whereas I post like about once a year, and I get and, and you know I've got uh, I've got some followers, but not really. And uh, but so I actually think no, I think it's perfect because it's it's cheap or free to do. You know, mm. it's like. Um, Whereas in the olden days, if you wanted to get exposure in front of the world, you had to either be incredibly lucky and be one of like the four magicians in the world who were on camera that year, um, or you know. So, so it's yeah, basically, I, I think I think at the moment it's a pretty good time to do any kind of visual-based performing art because you've got like yeah, everyone's got a camera in their pocket, everyone's got access to a sort of their own TV channel, basically. So yeah, I just I'm just not exploiting it properly, but I should be, as I tell myself regularly. Yeah, I think um, I did obviously check out your, your media platforms coming up to this show and I think your Instagram channel is very good there's a lot of good content in there but there's also a lot of engagement from kind of celebrity type types of people um which people can post a lot of content but not really have that engagement so I think obviously it's there and you're doing the right things um and you you're obviously meeting all the right people as well so no you're obviously doing ticking the right boxes anyway but I don't know do you need to post loads of stuff if you're getting the followers I don't know yeah, I mean, I, but basically, I, I have friends who are who are doing the whole the TikTok thing and the you know, you know proper, they're doing it properly, and they they get you know literally. So there's a guy, um, well, there's a few people there, anyway, and they have like millions of followers between them, and they make a fortune, they make an absolute fortune, you know, like and it's all through like through the ads and monetized, and they'll do a trick involving a can of a certain drink and, <laughs> yeah. you know, and like they're, like a guy I know, he's basically bought a house off it, you know, like like. A, big nice house and he was he was in debt like maybe two years ago now he's, <laughs> uh, now he's um he's been he's been hammering out the videos and um and it's paid off and it's like yeah i should probably i should probably be so, doing a bit of that we should start hanging uh the the, the cans up in the background <laughs> yeah. maybe yeah. yeah exactly yeah um yeah in one of your um instagram video uh, pictures there was a card um the silver magic circle card oh yeah is that something that's an official thing can you talk about that yeah, yeah, sure. Um, I'll see if I've got it to hand. Where is it? it must probably in my wallet. Um, so yeah, so the Magic Circle is, as I'm sure some of your viewers know, it's, it's a magic society, right? It's an, it's an, it's the biggest magic club in certainly in England, maybe in the world. I'm not sure. Um, and it's basically 
you you have to audition to get in and um it's all kind of secretive they've got their own venue and so there's euston station in uh in london and then like near the station there's this building that, that um you can only get in if you remember and it's owned by the magic circle it's got a theater it's got a museum it's got things like houdini's handcuffs in there or like wow, or the, sho the shoes dynamo wore when he walked across the thames it's got all these sort of you know that kind of thing all signed and whatever um and yeah, and they meet up every the members meet up every Monday. Obviously, you don't have to, but that's the that's this the idea. And there's a bar, and there's like they have lectures from visiting magicians, which is quite funny. The, the concept of a lecture, like magicians take this stuff very seriously, you know. Um, so you really study like that. There'll be a lecture on literally exactly how to hold your hand when you're doing a certain move and it'll be an hour of a guy talking about that or, or, or a girl but typically a guy because magic is a very very much a boys club um but yeah there we go here's my his his uh my magic circle he's kind of not showing up that well in the light but yeah it's like a silver kind of um yeah that's very cool. yeah um and yeah that's my membership card that i need to get in so this is my this is associate of the inner magic circle which is kind of a level up from the when you when you first enter which is quite good. which uh it doesn't mean anything really apart from that you get to show off that you're in the inner magic circle <laughs> but yeah that's very cool um so did you kind of uh, into lockdown start doing the zoom kind of shows or was it before that you had an yeah. idea about it yeah so so it was very lucky actually so when lockdown when the whole pandemic thing kicked off i, I genuinely thought i was going to be like ruined because all of my all of my <laughs> gigs got cancelled in like the same week it was horrible but um a couple of years ago maybe maybe three four years ago i um i'd come up with i'd been reading this um this book on it's like some awful one of those kind of businessy self-helpy books but i've just been flicking through it and it was talking about like about being disruptive in your industry which is like basically um Kind of breaking all the rules don't don't just do things a certain way because everyone else in your industry does it that way and so i was like well, well how could you really be disruptive as a magician and i was thinking of all these things like i could perform for free and I was like, well, that would be terrible but maybe you'd get loads of exposure because you were doing loads of gigs maybe shut the like shelve that one and i thought one of my ideas anyway that I actually thought did have legs was um so i made all these bullet points of potential things that would be an insane thing to do but that might pay off in some weird way and one of the things was that i could do tricks online rather than like, like you know over a sort of what was the and Skype brought, you know, Zoom didn't even exist, yeah. I don't think. Um, and I was like, oh, that's that's actually kind of interesting because you could do these interactive tricks, but, uh, you know, and, and nobody does that. Like, literally no, nobody did it at all. And uh, I was like, this this could be a thing. And I told Alex, my wife, about it. And she was like, yeah, that's a cool idea. And I, I kind of wrote most of the, sh the show and then I kind of didn't really know what to do with it. And I was like, oh, I'll come back to that. But then when the, um, when the pandemic like properly started my, I was like that's the say I was panicking and my wife was like do that do that thing that you said you know the virtual thing and I was like oh I don't know it won't I don't think it will work I don't think anyone will care and she's like just do it it'll be great anyway and to her credit that is literally what um, not only saved me like my year but it, it, I think I made more that year financially than you know, I've ever made in a year and basically so I mean like, again this kind of feels weird boasting about that during a pandemic I think a lot yeah. of people <laughs> did that but you know basically it, it it was a it was a very timely it was a very good like I'm, I'm very glad I did it as well it's basically the case and um I was I think as far as I know I was the first magician to do a virtual to offer a virtual show and obviously loads of people very quickly started doing it as well because there was nothing nothing else going on but i was as far as i know the first person to do it and because of that i got loads of bookings very quickly and um and initially i was doing this kind of pay what you want thing uh, where you could book me and it wouldn't cost you anything to make the booking and after the booking i just sent out a paypal link and um people would pay what they wanted some people would pay like hardly anything you know the, the response was always positive but some people couldn't afford much they'd pay you 30 quid or whatever some people would be they'd give you literally like a thousand pounds for like a 25 wow. minute show yeah um and and because it was pay what you want i think there were, that was a that again that was my wife's idea and that was i think the cleverest idea about it because it meant everyone was sharing the link with their friends God, you should do this thing it's the, yeah. and it's like you know it doesn't even necessarily cost you anything. you know i was literally saying if you hate it just don't pay me and luckily that never happened but um <laughs> yeah. there's, not, there's not a lot of future in that as a business model no, but um not. yeah um, but but because yeah because of that sort of no one had to actually enter their credit card details or anything to make the booking. It just meant the bookings just like uh, exponentially grew. And I, and I was, I was doing like, like one day I did thirteen shows in one day. You know, I was doing an insane wow. number of shows. Yeah, um, that's that's obviously stopped, pretty much stopped now. But I, I did really yeah. one, of, 
one or two a month again now but for a while it was like 20 30 a week more even um yeah so that was uh that was <laughs> yeah uh, I mean, weird. I mean, it seems it seems to be destiny, you know. It's it, you had it there, that there, this all happened, and it was just ready to fit in. So, yeah, um, I've, I've got a couple of questions from the audience, and then cool. should we bring some guests on shortly after that? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, so those people that um, I have messaged with the link, you can join it now, and you'll sit under the screen till we bring you on. But let me ask one of the questions. In fact, for one of the people that is going to be joining us, um, what is a magic mm -hmm. trick that you would not do? I'm sure, not sure this question makes sense. I kind of think so. Um, is this something too dangerous for some reason? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, there are loads of really dangerous tricks, um, and it's insane that people still do them. Like, like there's um, there's a trick called the bullet catch, right? Which you would have heard of, I'm sure. Um, and although obviously in this trick you're not actually, I mean, again, <laughs> for the, like, I'm sorry to shatter any illusions here, but you're not actually catching a bullet in your teeth as you're uh, as you're claiming to do maybe some magicians are <laughs> i think there's probably typically probably not there's a, the, the, you have a way of making it look like someone fires a bullet at you like maybe they've marked the bullet with like by carving an initial into it or whatever they fire it at you and you you catch it in your teeth and spit it into a plate and it's the same bullet that they've just loaded into their gun across the other side of the stage right and there's all these like amazing clever methods for that to happen and then they look really looks exactly like what it's supposed to look like it looks exactly like that's what's happening um but obviously anyway there's a method um but despite that because you're using an actual live firearm even though it's firing a blank at the time and stuff people die doing that trick all the time like loads of people have died doing that trick so wh whether they load the wrong bullet by mistake or wow. they or the gun even when you're firing a blank if it goes off at point blank range it can still do a serious damage and kill you so a lot of people die like that a lot of people um in fact, in, in the non-magic world, uh, Brandon Lee, you know, Bruce Lee's mm. um, whatever he was, cousin, brother, whatever, he he, di he died by having blank uh, a blank that wasn't a blank shot at him on a film mm. set. So anything involving firearms, no thanks. Yeah. Um, well, of course, that, that happened recently with uh, Alec Baldwin as well, didn't it? So, oh, yeah, exactly. Um, oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so anything involving that, I'm... I'm happy doing silly, uh, less deadly, <laughs> yeah. but perhaps less dramatic... Um, uh, you know tension at the time but at least I'm still alive and there's one there's one trick that I uh, that I see going wrong a lot and there's a lot of montages of this on in fact if you search magic trick goes wrong on YouTube probably the most common type of thing you'll see is something that magicians call smash and stab right and what that is is yeah sounds, great. Stab, sounds horrible yeah um it basically the general premise this varies depending on which version you do but the general premise is you have a big nail or a knife or something like that that's pointing upwards out of let's say a coaster right imagine you'd, you'd banged a nail through a coaster right up to the to the hilt if the nails have hilt <laughs> um and um and you put it on the table so there's a nail sticking up from the table right that's the, uh, and then you you cover that with a styrofoam cup and then you then you also have say three other styrofoam cups with nothing underneath, and you get someone to mix them around, and you uh, while you're not looking, and you start smashing the cups with your with your bare palm, and the idea is you're using your Darren Brownie mind control -y stuff to try and second guess where they would have put it, and and at the end you, you know the only remaining cup is the one with the spike under it, and you you you're unscathed or whatever, um that's the that's the idea of the trick, and in theory again the, the, there should be loads of these really safe methods for how it's achieved. I won't go into them, but there are ways of knowing where where it is, or pretty much knowing where where the, where the where the spike is. But like with anything, like human nature is is that occasionally you make mistakes. Like you you know you 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 have a moment where you you think one thing but you do the other, or you know whatever like. You know, we, we all make mistakes in any line of work, and occasionally, <laughs> you say, if you're just literally relying on keeping track of something in your head, one day you're gonna you're gonna do the wrong, you're gonna kind of miss something, and you're gonna hit the wrong cut. So, the, so in fact, even Darren, I think Darren sliced his hand uh, open by smashing, a, uh, doing the version of that trick. Um, but yeah, there's loads, there's loads of magicians, like loads that have messed that up. In fact, one version as well, which is which is horrendous, is that is where you get a spectator from the audience, and you, you've got their hand. And you're moving it over the cups and you're smashing the cups with their hand wow. and they're really tr they're trusting you because they're thinking like oh well obviously if there was any chance of it going wrong you wouldn't <laughs> you know uh, he wouldn't be doing this and it's like <laughs> yeah you think you think so yeah <laughs> wow um, yeah so i i, I bet have, i bet there's a claim straight after that i mean yeah what happened um, well the magician grabbed my hand to put, put and put it and slammed it onto a knife yeah yeah <laughs> so, wow. 
<laughs> yeah, I did a version of that trick actually. I've only done it once, and it was um, I did a TV show called Secrets of the Brain, and it was all about psychology and about how your brain can be tricked and exploited by by things you know um and they had me in every episode for a little so there was a neuroscientist presenting it and every and every so often i'd pop up in the episode and i'd do a magic trick that illustrated some aspect of what we were talking about and then there was an episode about risk and i thought well it is the kind of perfect trick for that and um mm. and i and i did do the trick once but i, I built in about 50 different safeguards i made i made absolutely sure that nobody was allowed to touch the cups at any point like it was I was really like uh, absolutely really anal about it, like, like and to the point, and even then I was terrified doing the trick. We got the oh, trick on tape; it didn't it didn't go wrong. But yeah, I was like, as soon as I finished the take, I was like, right, <laughs> that is the last time I'm ever doing that. It yeah. genuinely sounds terrifying, and I I think um, the only thing I can re like relate it to is the scene in Alien when he's got the knife and he's banging it between the fingers. Yes. Just waiting yeah. for that to go wrong. Um, yeah, but yeah, exactly. That's exactly what it feels like watching mm. that trick. Yeah. Which is why so many people do it because it's got, got that kind of built in uh, drama. Or, but well, yeah, it's not worth it. <laughs> really not worth it's it. It's not worth it. Don't do it. Um, yeah. Okay. So I've got two people that are sat in the, in our little audience uh, waiting to cool. come onto the screen. Are you, are you ready to do some, uh, yeah, some yeah, of your magic? Some, yeah, definitely. Okay. Let me bring on first uh, Anya Pavel. Thank you, Anya, for joining us. Um, hi, Anya. hi how are you great show so far oh thank you <laughs> yeah and, sorry i'll also bring on terry uh, hello terry hi hi thanks for having me hi okay cool brilliant uh shall i let, let you carry on um, yeah, yeah. So, um yeah should we just should we do a couple of bits so what should yeah I, i've no whatever idea whatever you so. feel whatever you feel comfortable okay. with all right, we'll start with a little thing to get warmed up. Um, okay, just uh, I've got a pack of cards because that is what magicians have. <laughs> it's a lot. And um, we're going to have a card chosen between the uh, between the two of you. Um, so let's see. Anya, in a pack of cards, you've got red ones and you've got black ones. Which color should we choose? I'll take black. Okay, perfect. We're going to go for a black card. Thank you. So I've instantly just um, realized I didn't take in your name. Oh, sorry, what, was, what was your name? Dave, was it? Or have I made that up? Terry. 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 I don't know where Dave came from. Sorry. Okay. So, um, <laughs> so sorry about that. Luckily, my magic is better than my memory. Um, so, oh, yeah. <laughs> don't you need a memory for being a magician, though? You'd think, you'd think so. <laughs> not, yeah. Um, so, so we're going to go with a black card. I remembered that much. Um, Terry, um, the black suits are clubs and spades, obviously. Uh, which of those should we choose? What do you think? Spades. Okay, perfect. We're going to go with a black card, and it's a spade. Um, I'm going to go back to you, Anya. Um, do we want it to be high, medium, or low? Medium. Okay, medium value spade. That's cool. So, so I guess that would be like a number rather than it being, say, king or queen, jack, that, and, and rather than it being maybe an ace because that's that's not medium. Yeah. That's obviously low. Um, so, what do you think, Terry? This, so, it could be like you know, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, whatever you think. What, what, what should we go? Five. For? Five of spades. Perfect. Yeah. Um, are we before I carry on, are we happy that that was a free process? Like it could have could have been anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Do any of you want to change your mind? Nope. No. Definitely not. Nope. No. Okay, so I'll give you the option. Okay, so in there, there is a pack of cards, as you would expect. There's mm -hmm. one card in here that is uh, a bit different to the others. Okay, so I'll show you what I mean by that. If I spread through here, you see that all of the cards are um, the same way up, all facing you, except, hold on, where is it? Oh, yeah, right there. Except one card that I turned over before I put them in the box. This is one face down mm -hmm. card. And you decided it would be black, and then a spade, and then a medium, and then a five. Are you sure you don't want to change your mind? <laughs> Good. Because that. Oh, <laughs> five of spades. Cool. Excellent work. Good. So, so that's a promising start, right? Um, but you know, maybe <laughs> but with that trick, people always ask me the same thing. They will say, "Does everybody pick the same card?" Right? Um, this, it would be kind of a gamble for that to be the method, but but maybe it's a popular card for whatever reason. Maybe it just seems random enough or whatever. So um, let's. It does not how it works, but just in just in case. Just in case that was the method, let's let's make it a bit more random. I'm going to mix them up a bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, hopefully you can tell that is a real shuffle. I'll give you another one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they're, they're genuinely all mixed up, all different as well, right? Um, and and uh, if I in fact, I'm going to turn them away from the camera. And if I spread through there like this, can one of you say stop as we go by? Stop. All oh, that. Isn't that weird Ooh. that you both said stop at exactly the same moment? Do you know why you said stop there? Do you know why you both said stop there? I'm going to split it why? exactly there. 
Right. Do you know why you stopped me there? Let me let me turn this towards you so you can see. <laughs> no. Oh, that's no the way. Way. the exact. Uh, well, um, so that's pretty cool. That is um, very cool. Well, thank you. Should we take it even further? Yeah, we got time Go to do a bit more. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right, um, yeah. Okay. So we're gonna we're going to mark the card, right? And just so you know that I don't have a duplicate of it because I could otherwise have another pack of cards on me with a duplicate, you know, of each card, right? Uh, so um, we'll, let's put a random word on it. In fact, imagine we're at a zoo or on a farm or something. What kind of, get someone give me an animal, any kind of animal. Manatee. Wow, okay, perfect. Manatee. Oh, um, that's the big, uh, that's that big fat guy, isn't it? <laughs> um, oh. they, 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 like, um, yeah, yeah, I know the guys. They live in the water. Hang yeah, yeah, what, those things. Um, so, manatee, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. So we have a pretty, I would say, distinctive, recognizable mark card, right? Um, which is good. I'm going to stand up for this so you can really clearly see what's going on. But um, here's the game. We're going to play follow the manatee, right? So here's, here's how that works. If I stand up. Uh -huh. oh, okay. There it is, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's going to start. That's about halfway in, roughly in the middle. And my job is to bring it up to the top. So this card here uh -huh. is the manatee. Okay. Let me show you that again because that was that was quite quick. Right. So we've got the five of spades with the manatee. It's going to start in about the middle. My job is to bring it back up to the top. So this card. Wow. <laughs> so we could just keep doing that, right? We could just keep putting it in and it jumps up. But if I kept doing it, you'd start to think that maybe I've got um you know more than one of these cards. I somehow copied it whatever. So but actually let, let's do this as well. If I bend it, hopefully that makes it pretty um sorry, can you see can you see what I'm doing there? <laughs> but yeah, if I if I do it like that, see that? Hopefully that makes it kind of um easy to see where it is, yeah. Now you're going to see the exact moment that this appears back on top. So look, watch the uh, watch the top edge. Manatee, <laughs> uh, which is cool. And actually, we you know what? Really slowly, I'm going to leave it sticking out from the back. So it's definitely in there. Okay, really, it's definitely in there. I'm going to leave it st I'm right in the camera lens, so I can't <laughs> cheat. Right there. Okay, watch. Now it's not on top. Okay, it's not there. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's in my oh. mouth. Thank you. Okay, that and is the... really cool. Oh, thank uh, you. And actually, the weirdest says thing about follow the mantee sounds like a drinking game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. It's, um, actually, the the, the I've, I've, that's not quite the end of the trick because there's a bit something else to show you. Um, in my back pocket, so if I stand up so you can see, in my back pocket, in my wallet. Um, there is a little zip compartment, and inside the zip compartment, there's the card, which is yours, which is cool. No. Um, but, <laughs> so, 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 and it really is the same one, yeah. But um, I don't know if any of you noticed this. Um, in the background, and anyone who's watching this on YouTube, you'll be able to watch this later to, to rewatch it to check that this has been here the whole time. In the background of my shot, there's a little box. Can you see this here? Yeah. Yeah. That's a box with a little folded playing card in it, and that genuinely has been there, like, you know, the whole time I've been talking to you. Now, I'm going to give you a close-up of that card. So if I bring that right up here, hold on. Right, so this is this is folded into quarters. This is a card I put there <laughs> before I joined this call. And that card <laughs> <laughs> is also yours, which makes no sense at all. Good, that actually is the end of the trick. Thanks. That was <laughs> brilliant. Well done. Oh, go. Cool. Amazing. Thank you very much. Really for, for real, that was really cool. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Um, I, I never know when to stop. I can do more. I I, 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 okay. I am I'm a massive Magic fan, and I loved Paul Daniels as a kid. I oh, yeah. still have the Paul Daniels Magic set, and it was my prize uh, Christmas present when I think I was eight. I had and, that, and uh, yeah, I loved it as well, yeah. I, 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 and I learned quite a lot, especially card tricks, and I always wanted to be a magician, but the writer took over. So, yeah, um, yeah so w this has been really exciting to watch seeing oh, cool. your progression because we're almost the same age so yeah it's how you oh, went cool. one way and i went the other but yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's really oh, cool. do you ever do anything now still no, i haven't do done ever... anything in years i haven't even yeah. yeah what question why does everybody have the bicycle cards all magicians use bicycle there's this well one reason that um they're the they're not very big in England, but they're the biggest card brand worldwide. So they're the biggest in America and, and pretty much in everywhere else, I think. So, that, so yeah. that, that, and because of that, they're like decent quality because, you know, they get the right, um, okay. brand. But also another sort of more 
um, practical reason. Every time a magic company wants to bring out like a trick pack of cards, right? They have to decide what back design to bring it out in so it matches your real cards. And of that course. only works if everyone's using the same kind of real cards. So, um, so yeah. I think as a result of that, like it's become this everyone uses the same. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Thank Actually, you. do you want to see? Do you want to see one more thing, but without the cards? Do you want to see something different? Are you still got time to stay on the line? I would love to. Can we? Chris? Yeah, yeah. We've got fifteen okay, minutes, yeah. guys. Yeah, fifteen minutes. So, oh, okay. brilliant. Oh. All right, cool. So, um, let me let's let me show you. So, you probably noticed I've got a Rubik's cube over here. Mm -hmm. You've got um, two. So I see another one. Oh yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yes. Good. Yeah. So I've got, the, I've got them all over the house actually because I've been uh, I'm getting quite obsessed with them. But during um during lockdown number one, which is when I this started, um out of sheer boredom, I decided before I started doing the shows, I decided right, I'm gonna learn a little hobby, and I and it was this. I was, it was like how to solve cubes quickly. Um, <laughs> absolute nerd, obviously. But anyway, that's what I, that's what I did. Um, we're not gonna do exactly that though. We're gonna kind of uh, do the opposite, um, which is much less impressive. We're gonna mix it into a random pattern. Mm -hmm. Um. And in fact, Anya, I'm going to bother you again if I can. You're going to be my Rubik's Cube mixer upper if that's okay. all right. Yes. Okay, so um, so I'll explain how that's going to work. Um, on the cube, we've got um, six different lights. So you've got mm -hmm. the left, the right, top, the bottom, the front, and the back. When I say left and right, I'm talking about from your perspective. So mm -hmm. don't worry about second guessing okay. what I mean by that. Um, so top, bottom, left, right, front, and back. Whichever one you name, I will twist that side. So if you said left, I would twist this this whole left hand panel here. If you okay. said right, I'd twist the right hand bit. If you said top, I'd do that. Bottom would be that. Front would be that, and back would be that. Whatever you say, I'll twist that side. Um, you can speed things up by going two left or three right or whatever. So I'd do two left or I'd do three right. You know, whatever it is. Um, but the point is, we'll 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 mix it up for a bit, and whenever you get bored, we'll stop. So it could be after ten moves, it could be after fifteen moves, okay. uh, whatever you want. Okay. Do you, okay yeah, so let's go. What should we start with? Three right. Three right. So one, two, three. One left. One left. And it's just right and left, right? Um, and you've got top and bottom and oh, yeah. front and back. Um, four top. Four top. One, two, three. And I've just realized as I did four, that actually brings it back how it was. Nonetheless. <laughs> yeah, good. Um, seven bottom. <laughs> seven bottom. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two right. Two right. One, two. Um, one left. One left. Uh, three top. Three top, one, two, three. Two bottom. Two bottom, one, two. Three right. Three right. Uh, that's right, isn't it? Yeah, one, two, three. <laughs> I don't know what I did. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, cool. Are we, are we, was that the end, or you, you want to do one more? You happy there? Okay, perfect. Um, Terry, just, to, just so you don't feel like you've done nothing at all, do you want to give it one more mix in any direction, or do you want to leave it exactly as Anya has left it? Uh, I'll leave it how Anya's done it. Okay, perfect. I'm glad you said that because it would have ruined the trick. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Terry, as you noticed earlier, this is not the only Rubik's Cube in the room. There is one, as you say, right there on the shelf. Now, before I come to, you're probably getting ahead of me here, but um, uh, before I come to that, I'm, I'm going to tell you a bit about Rubik's Cubes. There's a, there's a weird bit of math that goes on with Rubik's Cubes, where every time you mix up a cube, you create a, a world-first pattern, right? a pattern that has never existed before in the history of Rubik's Cubes. Sounds like a lie, but it's almost always true because of the, the odds of this exact pattern ever having existed are one in 43 quintillion. So it's like way less likely than winning the lottery. It's that kind of, that kind of odds. Um, so, so we've created a world-first thing here, Anya in theory at least, but this pattern, as I'm looking at it, looks kind of familiar to me. And I'm gonna show you it side by side with this cube over here. So this is the one that I mixed earlier. Uh, which way around is that? Is that the right way? Oh, yeah, yeah, look at this. So that's one I mixed earlier. This is the one that you mixed. And they are not just similar, but that side at least is exactly the same. That side, I think is exactly the same. So we've got the orange, we've got the blue, the, the, the white, the red, that's exactly the same. That side is exactly the same. We've got the red, the green, the yellow, which is which way, that way, uh, exactly the same. Um, that side is exactly the same. The, uh, so we've got the tops, the bottoms, the fronts, the backs. Every single side of the entire cube is an exact match with wow. what you have done. Anya is either a witch or a genius. Give her a round of applause. Well, I am a witch. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. There we go. And you know what, just to finish that off, um, because I can't have Anya taking all the, all the praise, I am going to try and do one further. I'm going to try and solve that. So you've mixed it up for us. Uh, I'm going to try and undo all that mixing. So I don't know if I hold it like this so in frame. Yeah. So watch the cue. I'm going to try and do it in under five seconds. That's the idea. So I'm going to go five. In fact, I think I've done it. Have I done it? Yes, that's done. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. What? 
That's, that's insane. insane. Thank you. I don't get out much. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That I love it. geeks. <laughs> Pete, that was fantastic. That, oh, thank you. that was amazing. Thank you, thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Oh, any guys, we've got any, any more questions for Pete? Do you want to ask him anything? Anya? Oh, I think. Um, what, what, what's your favorite trick? Most favorite trick in the world? This is a great question. Um, I, d I don't watch a lot of magic stuff. I really like it, but I, I think hmm. maybe, I'm trying to think. Um, hmm. There's a trick. What, what, what do you think, Anya? I'll answer Terry's question. So, so, uh, well, firstly, it, it kind of depends on the on the context and you know whether it's on stage or close up or whatever. But there's a trick that I really like. Um, where, in fact, there's a version of it that I do on YouTube. Um, in my, as a street, as like a street magic series, I've put up called Magic Trips. So, if anyone wants it, it's, I think it's the first episode of that. But basically, it's a trick where you get two random people, so two friends or whatever, some two people that have a connection of some kind. And you separate them apart so they're a few meters apart from each other. You get you get one of them to close their eyes, and then I tap the other one on the shoulder. So people say, but the the first person feels it, so they open their eyes and you go, "Right, where did I touch you?" And they say, oh, you, "You tapped me on the shoulder." The trick, and then the yeah. other the other person's like, "What?" Because <laughs> uh, they you know they, they they think because they've had their eyes closed that they that, that they know what's going on. They've been tapped <laughs> on the shoulder. But it was the other. So yeah, that's um that's a cool one. I don't know. It really depends though. Like uh, so, I like. Uh, that because it's just got that kind of weird creepy kind yeah. of uh thing to it i also just like real like visual flashy stuff where things disappear and change and mirrors and things I, I like that where there's yeah, like, yeah. disappear and it, it's it's a real fun thing and everyone's mystified i like those yeah okay cool yeah, yeah. I the dog in really quick with my mother-in-law so i'll mute myself really quickly i apologize okay cool. <laughs> bye Anya. <laughs> bye, yeah. um brilliant um Terry, was there anything else? Uh, otherwise, I will let you guys go, and then we'll see if... No, it's anyone... fine. I'll let you wrap up. It, amazing. Thank you so much, Pete. Thank you. Well, thanks for, <laughs> thanks for joining. Cheers. Thanks. Thank you, Terry. Okay, bye. Uh, there you go. Let's get him out of there. Um, <laughs> hello. Is that my mother-in-law? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she just disappeared on screen. Why not? There's some more magic wow. for us all. Like. Uh, <laughs> oh, let's get rid of them in the nicest kind of way. Pete, that was incredible. Um, oh, thank you. And obviously, um, there was a lot more that I witnessed on our magic show as well. So you guys really, if you want to... Are you still taking buckets, Pete? Yeah, um, so so I mainly do... So with, with the virtual stuff, I mainly do corporate things now. I mean, the, basically, the, the reason is... Um, because I got so busy, I started uh, as the only way of coping with it. I started putting my prices up quite a lot, and then yeah. and then as a result, you kind of price yourself out of the private small small parties, and, and then you start getting booked by more big corporates. So so I do. I'm mainly doing corporates, but um, I I do all sorts of stuff. So yeah, I mean, I'm always up for, and I do a lot of real world events again now. So little you know like weddings and Christmas do's and whatever. Yeah. Um, so I, li I just like I like performing. So if you have got an event, virtual or real, yeah, give me a message and um, and I'll give you. <laughs> yeah, I'll let you know if I'm free. Fantastic. But yeah, no, um, yeah. Um, Paul has asked if you could collaborate with any other magician, who would it be? That's a good question. I yeah, that is a good question. I Paul, are you a magician or are you, are you just curious? Um, I would. I'd really like to write with Darren. I think so. Darren Brown, who who does the. Um, People, people don't even necessarily see him in the same bracket as a magician because he does the more like the mind stuff. But really, he's a he's a magician who's presenting it in a slightly different way. But he, um, his tricks are they differ from a lot of other magicians in that they have this um, real structure, like a real writerly. In fact, appropriately for this show, they, they he uses rather than using kind of consultants who help who help make things appear and disappear, he uses writers to help come up with an intriguing, um, compelling. A hook or a premise um, and you know with twists and with uh so in the same way that if you write a short story or whatever you don't want the ending to be to be obvious from the beginning you know um so it'd be good to write with him and also just because he's he's just very good you know he's, he's, he's absolutely you know he's, he's one of the best um that's my first answer who else yeah, that's and also I, I like I like actually collaborating with comedians, so rather than necessarily with magicians, and perhaps for the same kind of reason, I like I like um, so so the magic side of things in terms of the sleight of hand and the kind of creating props and stuff. I kind of I can do that now to at least to a degree that I'm that I need to be able to do it. But um, I like I like looking at tricks and then going right, how do I make this funny or how do I make it um, you know uh, feel like a, feel a bit different. 
Um, so I, yeah, I'd like to. I don't know. It'd be quite cool to collaborate with like Noel Fielding or something. <laughs> just, yeah. go, just come up with the the maddest uh, the maddest tricks you can. Um, yeah. Brilliant. Noel Fielding sounds like a good shout. That one. Uh, Paul <laughs> said, "I think he is because Paul earlier commented, how do I go about showing you my uh, trick that I do?'" Um, so I think he is a magician of sorts. Um, I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> I don't know, give me an email if you want, um, Paul. Um, oh, thanks, Julie. Um, I, I'm not sure, Paul. Yeah, give me an email and we, we'll talk. If you're, uh, if, yeah, uh, if you're a magician, then maybe you'll be at the Magic Circle or something. But anyway, give me a message. Yeah, yeah. Paul, uh, drop me me or Pete a message on... on you can sh do the email to my show if you want or on Twitter, and I'll pass it on if you can't get to Pete or drop him an email as it is on your website anyway. Um, and we'll, we'll have see if we can hook you up there. Um, but we expect a demonstration, Paul, definitely. Um, so Pete, I mean, the question is then what's next for you? Have you got anything coming up now that we're kind of yeah. easing out of lockdown? Yeah. Um, so I've just signed up for the Edinburgh fringe again, which is, um, for anyone who hasn't been in, uh, it's a, yeah, a month long, uh, festival of us, comedy, magic, um, all sorts of performing arts, uh, theater. Uh, so I, I do, I, quite different to the stuff i've just shown you actually i, I do mm. stand up comedy magic and it it, it feels it's it feels very different um uh, yeah and it's my favorite probably my favorite type of uh, performing situation so i so i've just I, yeah like i said i've just signed up for a month of that in august um this year so it's every night at 8 40 i will go into go out into the, this venue and do do a show for an hour for um, whoever turns up for that night and it's a full-on a full-on commitment because it's um wow. it's, a full, it's a full month obviously and also like some days you have a sell a sold out show. Some days you have like three people in the room. You know, it just really depends. <laughs> Hopefully, not too many days like that. But um, in fact, I don't think I've ever had just three. But but it can really get close to that sometimes. It just depends on how you know. Like if it's raining outside, the flyers can't reach anyone because yeah. no one's out around or whatever. Um, and but but I'm really excited by that this year. I'm always excited by it because it's just a fun thing to do. But this year, I've totally changed how I'm kind of. How I'm writing my material, and I'm starting with I'm just uh, with these sort of premises, like, like as in the, starting with a joke or with the um, with the, just a funny premise, and then and then kind of building a trick into that. But almost as the trick's almost an afterthought. I want the tricks to be really strong, but that's yeah. not that's not how I'm starting. Normally, I start like right, I'm going to start with this nice opener, and then this trick that does this, and then this big thing at the end that wraps it all up. And I will try and do that as, but but that's not the. Um, I'm more getting more into the kind of stand up side of things, and the, like that's in a way actually yeah I didn't go into this earlier. That's, comedy has always been my equally as my, with magic. It's always been a massive passion of mine, but but magic has been the kind of path that I ended up going down through partly by choice, partly by the, that being what that being what the world threw at me um but i i'm starting now to just go right if i'm ever going to do comedy whether it's comedy writing or performing i kind of need to just make that happen so i'm quite quite into just veering more into the stand-up world um so that's yeah that's what's happening this year um what else i've written a kind of a tv pilot thing that i'm trying to get people to watch and so ideally they will give it'd be great to have a netflix series or a netflix special or something um or you know any channel other channels are uh, also <laughs> yeah um but yeah you know they, they, these are the sort of big big goals and then once you get that once you get any kind of major breakthrough like that you can mm. kind of pick and choose write a book you can do it, whatever um so yeah that's that's the goal because I, I, I don't want to be you know in my 60s going around um running around events to the tables you know that even though they can be really cool events i don't you know i want to have kind of moved on a bit and hopefully have mm. like I've, I've done i've done a fair bit of tv but not sort of but the fact that i have to tell you that shows that it's not, <laughs> yeah. quite, not, quite, not quite at the level that i would like to be at. yeah so yeah well, well when you've written your book you know where to come definitely you get back yeah, on yeah. it on this show um well, Paul said he'd be happy to demonstrate, so we need to figure that out somewhere. Um, okay. And amazingly, that uh, Terry, who was just on the show with us, is actually yeah. going to the Edinburgh Fringe as, as some sort of performance oh, really? as well. Yeah, oh, so you're there you go. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Well, I can't remember that. exactly what he's doing, so Terry left a message just and let us know, um, and hmm. and we'll see. Uh, it's a very small chance, but I have messaged them about coming as a as a some sort of uh, media presence. So we'll see what happens with that as well. Um, All right, cool. And if so, we well, shall definitely. Well, if you do come, I'll give you a ticket, regardless of whether you <laughs> yeah. get in as a, as a reviewer or not, whatever. Yeah. Um, but, it could be uh, one of the three on the quiet day. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But no, yeah, do, do come and say hello if you're there. 
he said uh, Terry says he's he's doing his own play there, so oh, that is amazing. fantastic yeah, as yeah. well. Yeah, you oh, have to cool. well, good luck with it. Good luck with it, man. Um, yeah, yeah, cool. Okay, so guys, thank you so much. Um, he says he's there from the fourth to the thirteenth of August. Yeah, I'll be there. Cool. <laughs> yeah. so there you go. There you go. Well, actually, why not uh, plug the play? What's it called? <laughs> yeah, what is it? Um, if he's quick, okay, guys. Uh, what I want you to do before you do shoot off um, and enjoy your um, evening of a Monday um, on the YouTube channel, there is a video, a ten-minute reel. I was going to play at the end of this show, but realised that would be a bit weird trying to end the show whilst the video is playing. Um, so go onto YouTube. Um, have a little look at that. It's 10 minutes of little clips I put together um, from some of the shows, including the the notorious giraffe scene from one of the panel shows. Um, but thank you so much again for from what I said at the start of the show. Um, it's called Blink and You'll Miss It. There we go. Quick plug. Oh, cool. um, uh, yeah. Um, the, have we got time for you to tell me what the giraffe scene was, or was that something that I Oh, um, so <laughs> the giraffe oh, scene. Oh. So I have um, created a very kind of... Yeah. <laughs> never, <laughs> the, like never mind the buzzcocks esque kind of uh, panel show for the writers community oh, um, cool. and it's only happened a few times so we want to kind of build that back up but the end is always an impression impressions around and that can be ranged from anything as a character to an animal and one mm -hmm. of the audience members um did a giraffe and it was just kind of a very comical impression of a giraffe yeah. um as, cool. as, well, as well as we had some weird impressions but yeah it was it was a, just a, a bit of a fun favorite Sounds great. Um, yeah yeah i don't know what would your giraffe impression be have you got would you have one well my height takes care of that really. <laughs> yeah it does really i mean <laughs> i can literally walk around eating the uh eucalyptus <laughs> leaves or whatever it is that they go for Acacia, who knows um yeah <laughs> brilliant um, yeah. Okay, guys. Yeah, thank you, Pete, so much for joining me. Honestly, it's been an absolute blast. I'm hoping people no, really thanks. enjoyed it, and I'm sure thanks they for have. having me. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Well, um, no, I hope you. Yeah, um, hope you enjoyed it, people watching. Um, and yeah, great. Well, keep in touch. And uh, yeah, thanks. We'll do, and see you all soon, guys. Take care. Bye.